You've joined us for today's session, Hit the Road with ArcGIS Field Maps. So the exciting new release that combines three of Esri's mobile applications into a single tool. So today we wanted to share with you how to get started with ArcGIS Field Maps and highlight some of the key features and workflows to streamline your field operations. And dialing in from Melbourne is Hutan Imad, Senior Consultant in our Solutions Engineering team. So Hutan has a knack for finding the best results for business problems. So you may very well have had a discussion with him already, or perhaps you've seen Hutan on stage or like today on screen. Um, so with that, I will hand to you Hutan to go through today's session. Excellent. Thanks, Laura. Let me just go ahead and share my screen here. Cool. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the session. I am super happy to be presenting on the topic of field maps since it's a new product and has been absolutely dominating the majority of my client conversations over the past couple of months. So curious to know what makes field maps so special? Let's begin. We'll start off by briefly covering the ArcGIS field mobility landscape as it stands now. It's been a rapidly changing scene over the past year, so it's a pretty good idea to take a, a snapshot of it. We'll then introduce field maps by covering its core functionality. We'll also touch on some of the recent updates to the app, as well as a sneak peek at what's coming in the future. We'll then dive into an end-to-end -end field maps demo that covers everything from data design with smart forms to uh, data collection out in the field, and even the data display and communication formats that are available to you. Field operation apps enable our clients to perform the common phases of field works better using the power of location, with ArcGIS sitting in the middle, tying everything together. You can use field operation apps to improve the coordination and operational efficiency in field workforce activities. You can reduce or even replace your reliance on paper, and you can ensure that both field and back office workers use the same authoritative data to reduce errors, boost productivity, and save money. Here's a view of the specific field operations apps that you may already be familiar with. Uh, these are the apps that help our clients be more successful by applying location intelligence to the various phases of field operations works. So putting those on a single slide, uh, these are Esri's most popular field mobility applications. You probably already know and may have used some, if not all of these apps already. And here's field maps. Now I know, I know you must be thinking, oh gosh, no, not another app. But this is actually good news because the new app is an amalgamation of five of these apps. So really we're going from something that looks like this to something that looks more like this. We're in effect working to reduce the total number of field apps from seven down to three. This is very good news. So ArcGIS Field Maps is an all-in-one app that uses data-driven maps to help field workers collect and edit data find assets and information, plus report their real-time locations. Because it's backed by the ArcGIS system, everyone, both in the field and in the office, benefits from using the same data. It's important to note that Field Maps is currently only available on iOS and Android, so there's no Windows native version of Field Maps. From a capability perspective, uh, Field Maps aims to take over all of these different phases of field works by essentially absorbing the capabilities of all of those apps. And this is in response to the users that found that deploying multiple apps to complete a workflow is too cumbersome. Essentially, we're looking at something like this. Uh, we have ArcGIS field maps that's consolidating multiple specialized field apps into one. And this is something that'll happen over multiple phases, actually. It's not done all in one go. So the three apps that you see at the top there, Explorer, Collector, and Tracker, their functionality and all of their future development are currently merged into the Field Maps app. So if you go and you download Field Maps, it has all the functionality of Explorer, Collector, and Tracker built into it. In fact, those three apps are set to be retired in December of this year, December 2021. The bottom two apps, Workforce and Navigator, their functionality is targeted for inclusion in Field Maps in a future release. So that's either later this year or sometime early next year. This is a breakdown by capabilities across the mobile app component and the back office web app component of field maps. Again, the current set of capabilities is represented in that lighter color text. That's for your collector, explorer, and tracker functionality. And the future capabilities of field maps are shown in that darker gray color that correspond to field work, uh, uh, workforce and, and navigator. 
from a licensing perspective, uh, as it stands, the kind of work that you'd like to do with field maps really tends to dictate the level of licensing that you'll need. And you can come back to this slide and the recording afterwards uh, to really explore these different use cases and see how they map to your, to your business. In fact, if you're currently using ArcGIS Collector, you can get like-for-like -like functionality by simply downloading the field maps app, signing in with your named user identity, and opening the web map of interest. So to get the same level of functionality as Collector, you won't need to do any sort of data migration or any user training, really. Everything is where you'd expect it to be if you're already used to using Collector. The, both of the apps are built using a very similar code base. Another popular, uh, popular question that comes up is around app linking, um, which is the ability to launch one Esri application from within another. Uh, great news here is that FieldMap supports app linking and works exactly the same as it did for Collector and Explorer. Okay, so going back to our original slide, we've determined that these three apps are already integrated into field maps, which means that if you require Navigator or Workforce functionalities, uh, you'll have to use their standalone apps for the time being. In a very similar vein, the Survey123 and Quick Catch Capture apps will not be integrated into field maps at any point in the future. Server123 is still your go-to app for advanced and complex form-based data collection. Its smartphone functionality is highly advanced. It's being constantly updated with new question types and features. And if you're already using Survey123, you won't have to migrate those workflows to field maps. Survey123 is here to stay. Quick Capture is also relatively untouched by the development of field maps. Quick Capture is built for rapid, at-speed collection of spatial data at the push of a button. It's really great for capturing simple pre-configured data types and you won't need to migrate your quick capture projects to field maps at any point either. All right, so I was planning on running a couple of pre-recorded uh, demo videos, but <laughs> against the advice of our marketing department, I think I should do it live actually. Um, there are a couple of new features that I wanna show off and look, if things start to go sideways, we can always jump back to the, uh, jump back to the video. So if everyone's all right with that, um, let's, do a, let's do a live demo. So the scenario that we're looking at here is um, asset collection and asset inspection against those, um, against those collected assets. So what we're looking at over here is uh, Yarra Bend Park uh, down here in Melbourne. And we wanna go around and we wanna collect different trees that are in Yarra Bend Park, and these will be our assets. And then we wanna be able to go back and perform one or more inspections uh, against each of those trees. So the way that we do that is by essentially putting together a point feature layer to represent our trees and a tabular layer to represent our inspections. And we tie these two layers together using a relationship table. It's a one-to-many relationship. And again, we're spending time in Arcturus Pro here because all, all of this data setup that we're doing right now, we can take advantage of it later when we're um, essentially publishing this map to our portal and opening it up with field maps. So, the more time that you spend here, it's actually time that's being well invested and you can leverage it later out in the field to make things run much more smoothly. The second concept that I wanna cover here uh, inside of Arcturus Pro is the fact that I wanna make things as easy as possible for my end user out in the field. So when they're going out and they want to collect a specific uh, species of tree, there might be hundreds of different tree species that they'll they'll have to be sorting through on their device to select the right species. And, and that might be really very error prone. And in order to do that, we're gonna take advantage of the concept of domains and subtypes. And if you haven't used these two, they're actually really, really quite cool. So looking at my uh, trees feature layer here, I've got a couple of fields set up. I've got the species field, which refers to the specific species of the tree, but I've also got this genus field. Uh, set up in genus, you can kind of look at it as like the family of trees. It's like a, a super type of the trees. And within domains, I've set up a domain for my genus here, a genus domain that has all of my different genus or families of trees here. So I've got my acacia, citrus, eucalyptus. And for each of these families, I've got another domain set up as well. So for example, if I click on my ficus domain, um, I have all of the different individual fig trees that fall within that ficus domain. If I click on eucalyptus, I've got the different uh, gum trees and the eucalyptus trees that fall within that, um, that, that family or that genus. And the behavior that I'm looking for is when someone is out in the field and they wanna collect a new tree species, I want them to select the genus or the family that that species falls in. And then I want the dropdown for the species to be essentially whittled down or filtered 
based on the family that was selected. And we do that with subtypes. So by basing our subtypes off of that genus field and the selection that's made in that genus field, we can actually represent different domains for that species. So if they've selected acacia as the genus, then we only see the acacia domain being represented in the species dropdown. If they select that citrus, then we only see the citrus domain, so on and so forth. And trust me, all the time that you spend here, it's very, very well worth it. It's gonna make our lives a lot easier out in the field. So once you're happy with everything, you can of course save your map and you can use the share tab and share the web map to your portal. And that's what we've done here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna jump into my portal. And once you share your web map over to the portal, you can see there's a web map item, there's a feature layer as well as a service definition. And this feature layer has the, um, has that relationship between my uh, between my feature, uh, the point feature layer, and as well as the tabular inspections. So there are a couple of more things that we want to do before we jump into the app itself. And the first thing is um, actually editing and customizing that web map a little bit. So I've opened up my web map here. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to add a couple of extra layers. So I've added a Vic Emergency Incidents layer. This is a live layer that shows um, uh, SES emergencies coming in. It's a spatially located layer. And I figured this will help my um, my field workers kind of have better situational awareness in case there's maybe a fire or something nearby they'll be able to um, see and kind of move to safety. The second thing I want to do is I want to customize the pop-ups that you see here. So when you customize the pop-up in, in, uh, in the map viewer here, it's actually also pulled into your field maps app. And the way that I want to customize my pop-up is I just jump over here and I do configure pop-up. I want to very quickly, at a glance, be able to, able to see for a selected tree how many times it's been inspected. And the way that I do that is with an attribute expression. So right here in attribute expressions, let's hit this configure button. You'll see that I'm using the arcade expression language. That's an Esri specific expression language, very straightforward to use, to look at the feature that I've selected take a look at the inspections, the inspection table, the inspections that are related to that feature and return the count. So this will be just a number that I'll return. So when I hit the test one, I'll probably say you know, a zero or a one or two, depending on the feature that's been selected. And once I've got that attribute, I can actually insert it right here in the pop-up title. And on the fly, whenever I select a feature, let's say I select this one, um, it'll run that arcade expression and it'll return a number. So this indicates zero, that means this, uh, this fig tree has not been inspected before. Uh, if I select this uh, citrus, this lemon tree, I'll see that, yep, that number says two. And sure enough, if I click on show related records, I'll see that, yes, I have inspected this tree twice. So you'll see that this will just be pulled right into my field maps application. So when we're happy with that, we'll hit save. And then we'll jump into the back office web app interface of field maps. And this is where we do a lot of that configuration that'll go into um, into the field maps app. So this is where we set up the smart forms and the conditional visibilities and all that. And we'll also set up the offline areas if we want to pre-plan those offline areas. So I'll just, I'll just touch on this a little bit later on. But first of all, let's look at the smart forms. So we have access to all of our editable layers as well as our tabular, editable tabular layers. And by selecting my tree layer over here, of course, I have access to all of the fields. I can move them around um, and set up this form and customize it uh, whichever way that I want. I can, of course, mark some fields as required, uh, make some fields editable or not editable, and I can group fields together. So these two recorded by and recorded on fields are actually grouped under Arborist details. Now, where the smart in smart forms comes in is with that little icon right there. And that icon right now refers to my conditional visibility. So I can use that arcade language again, that same arcade language in the, in the pop-up to set up a check or some sort of calculation and determine whether I want this specific field or group of fields to be visible. So in this case, I wanna check a specific field and make sure that that field was filled. So that species filled. Uh, field. If it's if it's got a value in it, then I want to be able to see my arborist details. So essentially, what I'm looking to do here is I want my end users to not be overwhelmed with tens, hundreds of different fields if they don't need to see them. I want to just I want to show these fields or groups of fields just in time and only show them the fields that they need to see based on responses that they've provided. Um, let's look at a slightly more complex example. So if I jump into my table here for my tree inspections, um, again. Similar kind of setup, but I've got more fields here. Um, I've got a size details group. I only want the size details group to show up if 
the condition of the tree is not set to dead. Again, I set up a conditional expression right over here. It's going in and making sure that um, the conditions are where I want them to be. If somebody marks a tree as dead, then I don't want to see um, hide information. Similar down here for my work details, right? I've got a lot of fields down here in work details, but I only want these fields to show up if there's work actually needed. So again, I've got a conditional expression in our case set up right over here that's checking for a specific value in that specific field. Um, and that's what the conditional visibility is done based on. So once we've got things set up here, we can hit save. Um, I also just want to show you this offline section. That's sorry, we'll just discard the changes. This offline section where we can define map areas to take offline. And this is for our pre-planned uh, map areas that we're looking to take offline. So within this interface, we can see our map, of course, and we've got a couple of different tools that are available to us for us to define these offline areas. So I can you know, just use the a rectangular tool to define an area and give give the details for it there, or I can use you know something a little bit more uh, details. For example, I'm only interested in this area of the river like so. And I can go from there and I can start to define things like, okay, the level of detail that I want to take offline. And I can set scheduling for the updates for this. So um, essentially this, this will be um, set up and taken offline on, on my workers' devices. And I can have that to uh, have that scheduled to update every day, every week, every month at a specific time, at a specific day of the week. And that'll, that's just something that's done automatically to make sure that my workers' version of uh, of the map is kept uh, up to date to the level that that I dictate. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and close this up and jump into the field map application itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my phone and I am going to share my screen. Hopefully everything goes smoothly here. All right. Yes, excellent. Okay, so we can see my phone screen. This could be an iPhone, um, uh, iPad, Android phone, doesn't, doesn't really matter. And I've gone ahead and I've downloaded that field maps application there on the top left from the App Store. And when I open it up, I just log in with my named user identity and that gets associated with my portal. You can see that I've got my field maps tree inspections uh, map available to me here. I can go ahead and open that up. And we'll see the map loaded. I'm faking my location in this case, it's simulated location, and we're in Yara Bend Park. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to capture a new tree. So I'll just hit that plus button on the bottom right hand side. By the way, if you've ever used Collector, you'll see that the mechanics here are pretty much exactly the same. Um, I can go ahead and select this particular location, maybe over here. I've got my genus or my families of trees available to me. I'll go ahead and select Acacia in this case. So I've got my location. and um, when I click on this species field, you can only see that that I've only got my, my acacia uh, species available to me. So I'm not overwhelmed with hundreds of different tree species that I have to sort through or even filter through. I'll select golden wattle in this case. And as soon as I filled in that field, I had another group of, of fields available to me and that's the arbor, arborist detail. So I'll just go ahead and type in my initials there. I'll select today's date as the recorded time. And I can also take attachments. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this over to the side here. I'm going to hit that take photo button and we'll jump over to this picture of a golden wattle. Bring this back up so you guys can see what I'm doing. Perfect. I'm happy with that. I'll go ahead and hit use photo and hit that submit button on the top right hand side. So we can add photos as attachments or you know whatever other files might be relevant. Great. So we've just captured this golden wattle. I can go ahead and look at my attachments. Yep, there it is right there and all the details. And let's say now I want to go in and inspect this tree. And the way that I do, do that is by this related table that we've made right down here. So I've got a tree inspections related table. I click it. You can see there's no inspections done yet. I'll hit that add button. And sure enough, we can see my smart form over here. So very, very few number of fields right now. But as you can see, when we go through and we start filling in um, this form in, in a very specific way, uh, there will be other fields that will be either expanded or they will be um, shown or hidden. So the tree condition, let's say the tree is going to be uh, damaged. OK, and then I've got my inspection details here again. Uh, I'll do an inspected on date as well. Uh, size details. Let's say this tree is about four meters tall, trunk of the radius 0.22, and is there work needed? So if I say yes, 
look at that. We've got a whole other set of fields that are made available to us. What's the type of work that's needed? Please remove dead branches. You can, of course, dictate if, you're, if your phone allows. Is it a public hazard? Uh, no, it's not a public hazard in this case. Is there a private property overlap? No, there is no private property overlap. Now, if perform my inspection, again, I could take photos and add attachments if I wanted to. I just hit that submit button on the top right-hand side. And, and that's it. These, these are the most basic things that you can do, the most basic functionality with field maps. We've captured a new asset. I right, just go ahead and select it. We've captured a new asset, and we've also um, performed an inspection against that asset. There it is. That's condition damaged inspection that, I, that I've done. Um, let's have a look at some of the more advanced functionality. So the first thing that I want to show off is um, you'll notice I've got a couple of uh, ficus trees over here, some fig trees. If I select that, you'll see that these are all common figs. And let's say when I was out in the field, I was recording these, I actually made a mistake. So I'm going to go ahead and use that hamburger button at the top there. I'm going to use this edit multiple tool to go ahead and select one, two, three ficus, field, uh, ficus trees that I'm interested in editing. Yeah, they're all common figs. So I'll hit continue. And I'll just go ahead and uh, change the species type from common fig down to, let's say, rubber fig. So they're actually rubber fig trees. And I'll hit submit. And what this will end up doing is it'll update all of those uh, fig trees all at once. So if I now select one of these guys, it'll say that it's a rubber fig. Uh, next thing that I want to show off right here is markup. So previously, markup was only really available in the um, uh, in the Explorer application, but you can see that you can now perform markups in here as well. And once you're happy with a markup, you can of course share it as a markup layer or as a screenshot image. So that markup layer can actually be shared directly out to the um, out to the portal, or you can email out the markup file to individual users, and they can download it onto their device and deploy it to their field maps or or um, their Explorer application. Okay, so markups are done. And the other thing that I wanted to show you were measurements. Again, pretty straightforward. We can perform linear measurements here. Um, we can also perform area measurements as well. Great. Uh, something else are the layer switcher. So you'll notice that I added an extra layer there for, um, uh, just for spatial awareness, that Vic Emergencies incidents layer. So I can flick that on. I can just kind of zoom out over here, see if there are any incidents nearby. OK, it looks like there's one down here. Uh, it's marked as safe. Um, as of about just a couple of minutes ago. So that's good. Nothing that's close to where my, uh, where my field workers are currently. And as you remember, the tracker application has also been integrated in here. So if I had turned tracker on, I'd actually be able to take a look at my tracks on this map, you know, the past 24, 48, 72 hours, just like uh, you'd be able to do with the tracker application itself. We'll jump out of the map momentarily and we'll look right here and you'll see this guy um, this again the entire tracker application has sort of just been condensed and put right here so you can flip your tracking on and off as needed and if you hadn't um, uh, if you hadn't pre-planned your areas to take offline what you could actually do is you could take some areas offline on the fly so if I use this hamburger menu over here I can say add offline areas and this will let me essentially kind of pinch and zoom around my map uh, to select an area that I'm interested in I can just hit that download area button on the bottom and it will go ahead and uh, start downloading that area for me so I'll just go ahead and stop that right now just for the sake of internet speed Great. So that is the, the demo portion of field map. So once you've captured your information out in the field there, some of the most popular ways that you can take a look at your captured information is through uh, web apps and web maps. Um, so right here, I've got a ArcGIS dashboard set up that's hooked into my, uh, my field maps layer there. So you can see that's the latest golden bottle that I captured. It was right there. If I select that guy, you'll see that's the photo that I took and then the details around there. I've also uh, tapped into the non-spatial layer here. Um, that would be my um, my tabular layer. And that's what these two guys are running off of. So I want to, let's say, draw some conclusions around the ratio of my hazardous inspections based on the condition of the tree. So if I look at trees that were marked as damaged, 60% of those uh, inspections were marked as hazardous. Whereas, let's say, if I look at my healthy trees, only about 16% of them were marked as hazardous. So you can really kind of take this and uh, use it in your in your decision making. OK, so let's go ahead and jump right back into the slides and finish off. Perfect. So just go over the key points from the session. Field maps has arrived. 
and is available on iOS and Android devices today. It supports domains, subtypes, and related tables for complex data workflows. It supports arcade expressions and has smart form capabilities. If you're currently using Collector or Explorer, then you should strongly consider migrating those workflows over to field maps. Uh, if you're using Survey123 or Quick Capture, then there's no need to migrate those projects over as both of these apps will not be integrated into the field maps uh, app at any point in time. If you've been inspired, or if you have any questions, you can just pop them in uh, into the chat right here, or you could uh, send me an email or follow me on LinkedIn. That's it. Over to you, Laura. Thanks, Sutan. And we do have a lot of questions. So I'm just going to pop back here. Yes, I've still got your details there um, for everybody to see, but let's get started because there's lots and lots of good questions. Um, okay, so Chris asks, first up, um, am I right? Um, in thinking that the count function is not yet available in Arcade in Enterprise Portal. Yeah, yeah. So, so Arcade, Arcade is a pretty interesting one. There can be um, functionalities in Arcade that are implemented, and you can use them in uh, in field maps, for example, or sorry, in in the web map, for example. But they might not be relevant to or yet supported in a field maps interface. In fact, just uh, a couple of months ago when I was starting to play around with field maps, there were some very cool functionality that I wanted to showcase that would show up very well in a web map, but they were just not supported in a mobility context. So um, so that's a very good question. Uh, there are some compatibility version and compatibility um, platform uh, things to consider when it comes to using arcade expressions. There is differences between ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Enterprise, and there are also differences between what's supported in a web context and what's support, supported in an app and field maps context. So that's a very good question. Okay. If, are there some resources that we could perhaps send out when we send the recording that speaks to that? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I'll, have a, okay. I'll have a record of these questions and I'll be happy to follow up on that. Excellent. Okay. Uh, a question from Darren. Hi, Darren. Nice to see you there. Um, we, um, so Darren's asking, we currently access our collector apps via our ArcGIS portal. Do we need to do anything to migrate? Mm. So if your ArcGIS portal's version, if your ArcGIS enterprise version is, I believe it's 10.6.1 uh, or higher, then you should be able to um, essentially download and deploy the field maps component to your portal so that it'll show up for your users. And once you've done that and you set that up, then you, you don't really need any extra steps to start using field maps with the same level of functionality as you were using Collector. Um, it's only if you'd like to start using, for example, uh, smart forms or uh, you know those arcade expressions and things like that, that maybe you'd need to take a little bit of extra time for uh, training and bringing your users uh, up to speed so you can take full advantage of all the features that Field Maps has to offer. But if you're just looking for like-for-like -for -like functionality, going from collector to Field Maps, then all you need to do is to make sure that the Field Maps application has been deployed uh, to your portal. I'm happy to send out some resources on that, or uh, you could contact your Azure Australia person, and we can assist. Okay, great. Um, okay, Patricia has asked a couple of questions. So first one, um, is there a plan to have the capability to create a map area based from an existing layer? So for example, a city boundary. That is a good question. I don't think this is something that's in development in the context of field maps itself or taking field maps offline. Um, mm -hmm. what, I would, what I would perhaps suggest is we move that part of the workflow a little bit further back, more to the data design phase. So if you've got, let's say a web map, that's only clipped to a city boundary, then that could be the web map that we use to base our um, offline areas off of. So I wouldn't say that you can probably do that with the field maps interface or the back office interface of field maps, but rather I would push it a little bit further earlier in the in the data design stage of your workflow. Okay. Um, and the next question was, is there a limitation on the number of photos that can be attached in the feature to the feature? No, there are no limitations on the number of photos that can be attached. If there is a limitation, it would be a size limitation that would be defined by your organization's setup of ArcGIS Enterprise itself. So it wouldn't be a field maps limitation, as far as I can tell. Um, it would be a um, essentially the boundaries that you've set up on your feature layers um, and the size that those features could have. That's okay. a good question. 
Um, Leonard asks, how many offline sessions can be stored at one time? Uh, I don't think there's a hard cap on the number of offline areas that you can have defined. Uh, it's really kind of limited by um, your device, your device's capacity. Yeah, okay, great. Um, Andrew has asked, um, what are the major differences between field maps and ArcGIS Collector? Great question. So essentially everything that Collector can do, field maps can do, and more. And all the future developments that would have gone into Collector are going to be put into field maps. So if you are a user of Collector, I would strongly encourage the move over to field maps. And I don't think it should really be an intimidating move because it already has that like-for-like -like functionality. And as you could probably tell from the demo there, um, a lot of the mechanics involved in both setting up field maps as well as using it as an end user are very, very similar um, to, to Collector. So I would strongly encourage moving over to field maps uh, if you are a Collector user. Um, and then you also get advantage, uh, you, you get to take advantage of the extra features that are built into field maps, right? So you can use those smart forms functionality. You can have arcade expressions in there to decide, you know, what to show and what to hide based on uh, different, um, different field values. Okay, great. So I know we've gone over time, but we've got a couple more questions. So I'm just going to keep going because this is great. Um, <laughs> the next one, Utan, was um, how do I choose between Survey123 and Field Maps if both of them have smart forms? Oh, look, that's a, that's a very good question and something that's come up really quite often. So I'd like to say that if you're looking to collect data from a form-centric interface, then I'd recommend using Survey123. If you're looking for a map-centric interface, then field maps would be the better option. If you're looking to collect multiple pages worth of information with complex question types uh, that have maybe dependencies on each other, then Survey123 could provide you with those advanced data collection capabilities. But if you're looking for a simple and streamlined data collection experience from the, the user's perspective, uh, then you can use field maps and then take advantage of the form groupings and the conditional visibility with Arcade. So I'd say if you're looking for a form-based interface or if it's a really complex set of data that you're looking to collect, use Survey123. If you're looking for a map-based interface or map-centric interface, then have a look at field maps. Okay, great. Um, so the next question's come in through from Sam asking, Collector has a Windows native downloadable app to use offline. Does Field Maps have a Windows app tool? Yeah, it's Too again. Funny. That's a that's a very that's a good question. Yeah, and it's a, it's an important one as well because we have certain clients that use the w Windows native uh, Collector application that they use on their Windows devices. They take that offline and they're quite reliant on it. So um, so the answer is unfortunately no. Uh, Field Maps will not have a Windows native version like Collector did. But I guess the good news of that is because of that reason, um, the Windows version of Collector will not get retired. So you can continue to use it to sort of fill in the gap if you're already using the Windows version of Collector. Okay. But look, if, you're, if your business uh, definitely has a need for, um, for field maps on Windows, for field maps as a Windows native application, send that fee feedback over to us because we feed all of this over to Esri and they're very keen to hear. Okay, Thanks. great. Um, Jennifer asks, um, does field maps support um, contingent values? Contingent values. Um, yeah, I think I'll have to take that one offline. Yeah. Okay. I, I no need a little bit more information on that. Yeah. Good sure. question, though. Okay. <laughs> We've got Jennifer's details. So, Jennifer, we will um, reach out and talk to you about that one. Um, okay. And last question um, that we've got here. Um, so, Brad's asking Is Utility Network supported on field maps? It's a very astute question, Brad. Um, and the answer is that it is coming soon. So over the next uh, couple of releases of field maps, uh, at first it's going to be a read-only access to data that's held in the utility network. Um, and then after that, the functionality is going to get expanded with uh, you know, basic tracing out in the field, and then it'll just it'll go, uh, it'll grow from there. If you have an immediate need uh, for you uh, for using utility network uh, out in the field on mobile native devices, maybe in disconnected uh, scenarios, then I would encourage uh, taking a look into the um, runtime SDK, the ArcGIS runtime SDK for a custom mobile app. Okay. Um, excellent. Thank you so much, Utan. Lots of great questions, and obviously. Um, please do reach out if you if there's anything else and there's an opportunity um, when we log out today, you can still ask a question if you haven't already. Um, but for now, I'll say thanks, um, Hutan, for today's session. 
My pleasure. Thanks, everyone.